Thank you everyone who come here for the open source and career track. I'm your host Jeffrey today. This track focuses on how open source and career come together. Our next speaker is Wei Chi Cho. She's an engineer who currently lives at the Netherlands with a literal art major graduation background. She's going to share her learning experience with beginner who has interest in programming or people who has interest in Europe for engineering career. This session will be remote track. Speaker will be on Google Meet. Yeah. Uh, you can interact and get and speak with him. Q A with him with her later. Okay. Let's welcome Richie Show. Hello, I'm Richie. Thank you for having me. I'm very glad to be here today. Uh, in my talk today, I'm going to walk you through my journey of becoming a developer in Europe. And I would also like to talk about uh, some open source learning resources, some ways to make contribution to open source community, and also share with you my working experience in the Netherlands. So first, uh, some background about me. Uh, I am a front-end developer at HBO Max. HBO Max is a streaming product. Uh, it's similar to Netflix or Disney Plus. But uh, HBO Max uh, has not been launched to Taiwan yet, so I truly hope that uh, we can meet you soon. And before that, uh, I was a liberal arts graduate. I studied history at NTU. So you might wonder, how did I become a developer? Well, it's quite a journey, actually. Uh, back in 2018, I moved to the Netherlands. I lived in Amsterdam. And I struggled to find a job because I don't speak Dutch at all. And at that time, many of my Taiwanese friends who uh, work in Amsterdam are all software developers. And they told me that uh, there's like really low or even no language requirements for uh, working as a developer. So that's actually the first uh, reason for me to start thinking about making a career change. So it's nothing noble, I just wanted to survive, I just wanted to get a job. But after I started taking some online courses, uh, much to my surprise, coding is fun and it brings me a lot of joy. For example, I really love the short feedback loop that allows me to see what I've built to show up on the screen instantly. So it's not like a building a house or growing a tree you need to wait for months. For coding, the result come out uh, within milliseconds. So that's the first thing that uh, really fascinated me. So, um, so yeah, so it's it kind of like ignite my passion and I think I really want to do this. So I start uh, studying really hard. I make use of many online resources. I joined the bootcamp. And after that, uh, luckily, I landed a job as a front-end developer. So that's why I'm going to give a talk uh, about this today. So if some of you also think about making a career shift, or some of you, some of you are not a computer science major, but you are interested in uh, learning programming, I hope that uh, my talk today will be helpful to you. Okay, so let's uh, take a look at the learning resources. Uh, there are many options uh, nowadays for you to uh, self-learn programming. Uh, there are a lot of uh, online learning platforms out there, and you can do it like a traditional way. You can read a book, you can read some articles, you can watch the YouTube videos. Uh, the reason for me to introduce these two websites specifically is because, uh, first, they are both open sourced, and secondly, Speaking from my own ex experience, they are really, really helpful to me during my journey. So let's take a look. The first website is FreeCodeCamp. Uh, this website provides you with a lot of courses, a lot of articles. They are all free of charge. It's open sourced. And uh, my suggestion is that you can start with uh, basic HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. These are the three uh, fundamentals for front-end developers. 
And what I like about FreeCodeCamp is its interactive tutorials. I will show you a short uh, live demo uh, shortly, uh, so you can see what I meant by uh, interactive uh, tutorials. And then we have MDN. MDN uh, contains a lot of uh, documentations about uh, web standards, web technologies. It's very handy, very useful. You can think it as a uh, dictionary that you can look up things uh, easily and quickly. Uh, so, uh, I I visit this website like uh, like every day during my daily work. So, uh, this website is really highly recommended for you to you know at least take a look and explore it a bit. And so, I think it will be nice for us to uh, take a look of the website so I can show you the live demo. Okay, so <clears throat> this is the website. Uh, of Freeco Camp, so you can see on the left hand side you have the search bar so you can basically just type uh, whatever you want to learn for example JavaScript, TypeScript, React, so on and so forth or you can click on the menu and uh, there's a cur curriculum here so you can follow the curriculum they designed um, so uh, basically it's up to you how you how do you want to explore? How do you want to make use of this website? And then uh, this is the course that I want to share with you. Uh, this is the basic JavaScript, and this is actually what I started with. So inside this course, you can see there's a lot of uh, very short, simple uh, topic. Uh, for example, like how to declare a variable, how to comment, and so. Uh, you can do this small topic one by one because each one is just so sh very short and you don't need to you don't necessarily need to follow the order so it gives you a lot of freedom and flexibility so uh, how can I do this we can uh, take a look of uh, one topic together okay so when you click on one of the topic it looks like this you have the description on the left hand, uh, left hand side and you have this coding area on the right hand side and then once you finish your coding you can click on the run the test and you can see if you pass or not did you uh, meet the requirements so uh, we can do this together uh, so in this topic it wants me to convert the string into an integer using the function parsing Okay, so I think I finished and I run the test and then you see that something went wrong. I didn't meet the, uh, I didn't get expected, uh, expected uh, uh, value. So I have to take a look at my code again and I noticed that, oh, I didn't pass the string. That's why. Okay, so I run the test again and voila, I passed the test. So this is what I meant by uh, interactive tutorial. So it's not like uh, reading an article or watching the video. Uh, in FreeCodeCamp, it gives you this uh, hands-on uh, practice uh, opportunity. So you can, uh, you can uh, try this practice by really doing some codes. Uh, for me as a beginner, it gives me more fun and make me feel more involved so uh, that's why i will highly recommend this to like uh, total beginners uh, you can give it a try and every test every practice is really short and simple so it's easy to follow easy to move forward okay and then then let's take a look at mdn this is the home page of mdn and you have the search bar here so you can uh, think it as a dictionary you can just uh, look up anything you wanted to so for example we just learned about parsing uh, from frico camp right but i want to learn more about it so here you have this uh, try section you can run and you can uh, alter the value here and then in the description uh, section 
you have uh, this uh, description comes with more details compared compared to FreeCodeCamp, so you can really see what are the uh, definition of the parameters, the definition of the return value, and then you have more examples. Uh, you can take a look, and then you have this uh, see also section. So it listed down the related uh, topics, related uh, functionalities. So this is the way I uh, I learned. I learned something from FreeCodeCamp, and I always go to MDN to uh, uh, look it up to see the just to have a better understanding about it, and also explore the uh, related uh, topics. Okay, so uh, this is just one example, and we can take a look of the other one. So, for example, uh, you want to check out some CSS property uh, opacity, for example. And then you have this uh, demo uh, section. You can play around, and also you can um, change the value here to see how it looks like. And you can also maybe try. Oh, can I make a string? Okay, no. You have this like yellow arrow cross, and then you may be thinking, can I make it a percentage? And then it turns out you can. So. This is, uh, as a beginner, you can, you know, just play around it and make some if exploration. And then, of course, you have the description. It tells you the requirement for each parameters. And then you have more uh, examples, uh, more examples. And then you also have this um, browser compatibility chart. and. I want to talk about this a bit more is because uh, when you are self-learning you also uh, develop with uh, like the latest the modern browser but in real real in real world uh, when you join a company maybe their product is targeted at an older browser or a low-end uh, device so that's uh, very important for you to check out the browser compatibility to make sure that if the browser or if the browser that you are targeted at uh, support this CSS uh, property you want to implement it. So so yeah, I just uh, give you some uh, ideas about how how rich uh, uh, this MDN documentation contains. You can see the definition, the usage, the examples, the related topic, the browser compatibilities. So um, this is just super handy, super useful, um, highly recommended. I still visit uh, MDN every day, like literally every, every day uh, in, my, uh, in my work. So I would uh, really suggest you to take a look up, up this website, explore it, and uh, just uh, give it a try, play around it, okay? And then we can go back to our slides. One second. Okay. Okay, so uh, we just talked about some uh, learning uh, resources. And once you feel like you're more confident as a developer, you might start thinking about contribute to open source project okay so uh, this is from my personal experience when I uh, uh, when I have some skills about like very basic uh, JavaScript uh, TypeScript I think about okay I want to I want to uh, make some contribution I want to solve some bugs on the open source project but uh, when I uh, look uh, looking at their box list, uh, there are not much uh, good first box left for me to pick up. So what is a uh, good first box? These are the box uh, identified as a good introduction to the project. They're often relatively easy to solve. So that's why we as a beginners are encouraged to pick up the uh, good first box first. Uh, first. Okay. Uh, but if you uh, take a closer look at those, you know, like big 
popular open source project, for example the Firefox browser or the React, you can you can see that there's actually not much a uh, good first box left for you to pick up, and what's left open are uh, either super complicated, super difficult for beginners, or there are already many people uh, tackle on it. Uh, there is a lot of already a long discussion thread on it, so it's kind of difficult for you to ju just jump into and work on that bug. So this is the difficulty that I faced when I uh, tried to make some contribution to open source project. Uh, that's why I want to uh, provide you with other alternatives. Uh, this is something I, I uh, done before. The first one is that you can think about uh, making contribution to MDN localization or translation. So we can take a look uh, at this screenshot. So every page on MDN, you can click on the uh, language button and in the drop down menu, you can see how many other language already supports this page. So for example, on this page, uh, there's not yet a, tra a traditional Chinese version, so this is something you can help out with. So I've done this like a few years ago. I helped with uh, translating a, a basic HTML uh, standard page and basic CSS page. And by doing so, my feeling is that it's, it's quite nice and beneficial to yourself because in order to uh, make the translation, you need to first read through the articles, you need to understand the topics, and then you can uh, really write it in your own language, right? So it's like a learning process. You're not only contributing to the community, but in the same time, you're, only, you're also learning, you're gaining uh, more knowledge, you are uh, improving your own skills. So I think this is a, a win-win uh, way uh, to make contribution to open source community. And the second uh, second, uh, second uh, thing I will suggest is you can help out with a Coast Cup landing page. I done this, uh, I think it's two years ago. Uh, a landing page is usually a static page, so normally it wouldn't have like really complicated features. So that's why it's good for beginners to practice your basic uh, HTML, CSS, vanilla JavaScript skills. And also, if you haven't worked uh, within a group or on a team before, it's really nice for you to practice how to use Git, how to use GitHub, how to make a pull request, how to make uh, call reviews. So basically, how to collaborate, collaborate with other volunteers. And I think this will be uh, very helpful to you as a beginner. So my my suggestion uh, would be just you know reach out to the staff uh, listed on the website and um, who knows maybe you can help them with their uh, landing page for next year and that would be super cool okay and then uh, once you've uh, accumulated some experience it's time for job hunting and uh, LinkedIn is the most widely used platform here in the Netherlands. I'm not sure the situation in Taiwan, but I think it's, it's worth uh, words to uh, update your LinkedIn profile and uh, just make sure that you add uh, the skill set because the recruiter might use a uh, filter or search function to uh, look out to the uh, candidate. So make sure they found you. And then uh, the other suggestion will be don't limit yourself to uh, just one channel. For example, you see a job opening on LinkedIn. In addition uh, to just uh, applying through LinkedIn, you can also submit your CV uh, through their official website. If you know who is the responsible HR, then you can send them a direct message, send them an email, just try multiple channels to, uh, to uh, just try multiple channels. That's what I want to say, uh, because it won't cost you anything. Maybe just five more minutes, but it might uh, open opening up more opportunities for you. And uh, and the other thing is that you can work with recruiters. 
Sometimes recruiter will reach out to you directly or sometimes you can try to connect with them and following their posts and maybe you'll find something uh, interesting. And regarding the interview processes, uh, I believe that most of you are familiar with tech questions and behavior questions. So what I want to share particularly is coding interview. And I have experience doing with uh, doing pair programming uh, interview. It is during the COVID times, so we done this remotely. Uh, so me and my interviewers, we just log into this uh, pair programming uh, interview platform and they gave me assignment. I start coding on my laptop and they can see my screen. And uh, what is challenging about uh, coding interview is because uh, normally when you code, you code in silence, right? But during the interview, you are forced to uh, speak out loud your thoughts so that your interviewers can uh, evaluate your way of thinking, they can have discussion with you, and this way of coding contradicts your daily habits. So this is something you need to practice. Uh, so if you know that you are going to have a coding interview, whether it's pair programming or whiteboarding, uh, make sure that you practice beforehand and get your de developer friends to do this together with you. I think that will be helpful. And then about visa, uh, because I don't have experience in working in other countries, so uh, the the situation I'm sharing here is solely in the Netherlands. So basically, most company will uh, sponsor you with highly skilled migrant visa, but uh, just remember that this visa comes with a certain salary requirement. So you. Uh, just remember to uh, mention this with your recruiter. Make sure the company uh, knows the process, they know the rules, they know how to uh, apply this for you. And then about uh, relocation package, if you are hired overseas, uh, most of the big companies will uh, pr provide you with uh, relocation packages. But what is covered by these packages may differ from company to company or from job title to uh, job level to job level. So uh, make sure you double check this with your recruiter beforehand. Okay, so those are the uh, practical things. And then now I want to uh, talk about uh, the culture here. So one thing I observe uh, is that uh, here in the Netherlands, they really value work-life balance. For example, we have a holiday allowance. This is regulated by the government. It means that uh, all the company need to pay holiday allowance to the employees. And holiday allowance is the amount of money that is in addition to your regular salary. So they're like basically give you money and encourage you to spend it, spend it during your holidays because they believe that it is important to uh, take a break go on vacations, it will be uh, good for your mental health. <laughs> so so this is uh, one of the things that I was uh, shocked when I first uh, heard about holiday allowance and then I think, and I also very appreciate uh, this. And the second thing is uh, at my current company, we have this summer program, meaning that uh, uh, our company give us half day off uh, on Friday during the summer times. So they encourage us to uh, stop working in the afternoon on Fridays, go outside, enjoy the sun, spend time with your family and friends. And I, I just think this is super cool. You can, uh, you can really see their attitude towards uh, work-life work balance and how they uh, value this. So this is something I personally really appreciate and I find it really attractive uh, for me to uh, working here. And then uh, the other thing I want to share is the uh, work from home experience. So uh, two or three years ago, we have our first uh, lockdown. That's the time when I joined my uh, uh, previous company, Deloitte. 
So uh, during onboarding, they just sent me uh, the laptop and other equipment to my apartment. And then uh, when I quit my job, they sent a delivery man to my apartment to collect the laptop. So for these two years of working at Deloitte, I never been to the office. And uh, for me personally, I enjoy working from home because it saves me a lot of time. I don't need to wake, wake up early. I don't I can skip the community and so um, nowadays many company offers a flexibility you can choose either you want to work in the office or you you want to work from home and I really appreciate this kind of freedom to you know for employee to decide where I want to work and so so yeah so just sharing, sharing this uh, experience with it with you i think it's also very fun for a person to uh, work for a company for two years but never been to the office so yeah just a fun story of mine and then the last thing i want to share is a bit more personal uh it's about the imposter syndrome uh so when i first uh start working as a developer i always feel uh stressed uh sometimes uh, terrified even and I always doubting my own abilities and um, sometimes I even think that maybe the company hired me by mistake and the reason for that is because when I working with the colleague I cannot I, I just keep thinking that oh they're all computer science major they spent four years in college learning the solid uh, fundamental knowledge but I'm just a book camper. I spent like three months in a book camp. I spent like five or six months on this online learning resource. I can never be as good as they are. So this kind of uh, self-doubting um, feeling, uh, you know, grows over time, and at some point it just became really over well overwhelming. And the real the reason I want to share this with you is because maybe some some of you also think about making a career change, and maybe this is something that you might face in the future. So I just want to to tell you that uh, it's okay. You are not alone, and there's no reason to be uh, shamed or embarrassed. Uh, the the suggestion I I could give is that. Try your best to build up, build up your confidence. Talk to people, ask for advice. Don't be ashamed. Don't be embarrassed by yourself, and uh, make a strategy. Equip equip yourself with solid knowledge and skills, and most importantly, find the joy of your work because that's what matters most, right? Uh, so, I myself, I still struggle this from time to time. And what I wanted to say is that it's okay. Uh, we are on this journey together. So uh, this will be my talk for today. And thank you. Uh, thank you for joining me. And if you have any question, it's more than welcome to reach out to me. You can send me a direct message through LinkedIn. And again, thank you. <laughs> any question? Oh, actually, I think the in 現場所以有朋友中文是拿到工作在台灣拿到工作前才過去的嗎 不好意思我剛剛沒有聽到聲音我現在才開始聽到聲音已經開始Q&A了嗎 那還有其他人有想要問講者的問題嗎? 
Donc, tu vois <笑>我想問一下你的第一份就是在 所以这是我第二份的工程师的工作。那可以问一下，你觉得你可以进HBO <音> 所以我的建议真的是就是多练习如果你有拿到一个面试机会然后你知道他们会有就是写程式的面试的话记得多练习因为像HBO Max是一个streaming product 所以我其实没有这个方面的知识或经验但是还是很幸运的被录取了所以我觉得只要你写程式的基本功力在的话我想要请问就是当初离开那个Deloitte的原因是什么 然后对我来说会比较没有感情的连接，因为我可能做这个project做呃两个礼拜，又去做另外一个project，就是你知道顾问业会一直在不同的project之间呃嗯怎么说，就是你负责产品会一直变，然后对我来说我比较想要长久做
的那个情景，这是我觉得比较需要练习的地方。嗯。OK。好，那时间差不多。在三分钟就要换下一场比赛。对。<笑>那如果还有问题的话，看呃，我们就用 Hack MD 的共笔或者是其他方式问嘛。嗯、呃，好好，谢谢。那拜拜。谢谢，谢谢，拜拜。